Okay, guys, um, we can get started. So as I explained it to you guys before, uh, basically our content has been all covered, right? What I want to do here is basically to just wrap it up, wrap up this, this chapter in our last subject is to actually um, go a little bit deeper into trees, uh, graph theory and trees, okay? And um, we're gonna look at a few implement, possible implementations and the, the theory behind those implementations or, or those um, uh, resources using uh, graph theory and trees. Specifically, we're going to talk about the uh, spanning tree, pro well, spanning tree in general, not specifically the spanning tree protocol, okay? Which was actually subject of our studies when, uh, when you guys were presenting some applications using graph theory and or um, uh, trees and subtrees, right? Also, I want to talk about the Dijkstra protocol, which I also mentioned in class. So the idea is to just go back to those two, um, <coughs> the <coughs> I'm sorry, those two implementations and um, understand what is behind it, okay? So, let me minimize this. By the way, guys, if at any point in time you want to ask any questions, please feel free to, okay? Just raise your hand and um, I'll, I'll allow you to, um, to, to ask or make comments, okay? So, spanning trees and the shortest path um, algorithm specifically, we're going to look at the Dijkstra protocol and the reason why I say that is because the Dijkstra protocol Although or the Dijkstra algorithm, although it is the most common implementation of the uh, of the shortest path uh, protocol or the shortest path algorithm, algorithm, that's the not the only algorithm that implements shortest path. Okay, so we will focus specifically on that type on Dijkstra. Oops. So, first, let's understand what a spanning tree is. And you're going to see that it's actually pretty simple, okay? A spanning tree for a graph, G, <clears throat> is a subgraph of G that contains every vertex of G and is a tree, okay? So, again, if you have a graph G, and if you can, all, all of the possible subgraphs that you can assemble, let's say, from that graph G, so that subgraph of G must contain every vertex, okay? And it is also a tree. And by saying that it's also a tree, we must remember that we cannot have circuits in a graph. So it's got to be a connected graph and it cannot have circuits, right? Then you're going to have uh, a, a spanning tree. So proposition one, every connected graph has a spanning tree. It's not saying that every connected graph is a spanning tree. It has a spanning tree as one of its possible subtrees. Ah, I'm sorry, subgraphs, okay? And two, any two spanning trees for a graph have the same number of edges, okay? And we'll understand why. So, if we look at this example here, find all spanning trees for the graph G pictured below, right? So, find all spanning trees. And what we just saw is that a spinning tree must be a tree including all the vertices, correct? And we cannot have circuits, okay? 
Therefore, the graph G <clears throat> has one circuit, V2, V1, V4, V2, V2, V4, V1, V2. Do you guys see that? This is a circuit, right? So if you start at V2, it goes to V4, V1, and it go, goes back to V2. That is a circuit. And that's something that we cannot have in order to find a spinning tree. So as long as you eliminate this circuit here, right? And you still uh, maintain that connected graph, including all the vertices, you're going to have the possible spanning trees, as you can see here down below. So, for example, the first one, basically, what we did was to eliminate this edge between V2 and V4, which was right here, right? So now you don't have that circuit anymore. Similarly, we can do the same thing by maintaining the edge between V2 and V4, but eliminating the edge between V1 and V2, this one that would go um, here at the bottom. So you still have a subgraph, I'm sorry, a spanning tree if you eliminate that edge, right? And again, you can also simply eliminate this edge here to obtain this spanning tree over here okay now it's important to mention that uh, uh, to to get a spinning tree it does not mean that you cannot have you cannot go back from one vertex to another one um, twice using the same edge that there's no problem there what again what you cannot have is a circuit okay that's basically that's the most important restri restriction connected graph without circuits so based on that concept we may have some techniques in order to um, calculate different things for example let's say that you have a graph specifically a tree and you want to find the shortest, um, the 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 uh, the possibilities or the the lowest cost in order to perform a specific trajectory, or even a generic trajectory, which is actually the difference that we're going to see between a spinning tree and shortest path. So first. Let's take a look at the minimum spanning tree, the idea behind a minimum spanning tree, right? So the graph of routes allowed by the US Federal Aviation Authority that is, that is shown below in this image below, right? Can be annotated by adding the distances in miles between each pair of cities. Now, obviously, <clears throat> obviously, there are many, many different ways that you can um, define the possible routes from a source and a destination, right? Or not specifying, without specifying a source and a destination. You can basically say, okay, <clears throat> out of all these uh, edges that I have here, one way of passing through all the locations, in this case, all the cities, right? But using the minimum cost, which means uh, uh, taking the shortest path, whether the path is distance or whatever metric it is. In this case, we're analyzing distance, right? But observe that we're not focusing on source and destination specifically. We have these cities here. And for these cities, these are the edges. These are the 
and uh, the point-to-point -point connections, the point-to-point -point links that connect two endpoints. Now, we have a bunch of pairs, a bunch of uh, pair of endpoints, right? Now, if I want to go through to try to uh, project a trajectory that is going to pass through all those cities, which one will uh, help me uh, saving, uh, not, not driving longer distances? Okay, how can I save my drive? So, again, you have this uh, map here, right? And here you can see the distances in miles between each of those pair of endpoints. So, for example, between Minneapolis and Chicago, we're talking about 355 miles. Between Chicago and Milwaukee, 74 miles. Uh, between Louisville and Cincinnati, 83 miles. So you have all those distances, right? So suppose that the airline company wants to serve all the cities shown, but with a route system that minimizes the total mileage of the system as a whole. <clears throat> note, that, note that such a system is a tree because if the system contained a circuit, removal of an edge from the circuit would not affect a person's ability to reach every city in the system from every other, but it would reduce the total mileage of the system. So let's understand what we see here. Again, how can this airline company find a way of uh, getting to all of passing through all of those uh, cities? Saving mileage. But not only that, we want to do that by creating a spanning tree, which means that we must eliminate circuits. So, for example, we can see that there is a circuit over here, correct? There is a loop there. Now, what we saw before is that, for example, oh, a possible subtree would be to simply, for example, we eliminate the edge between Milwaukee and Louisville. Yeah, that's right. But is that the best option? Is that the optimal option, right? Remember, we want to, uh, to save mileage here. So, the idea is to create a subtree, uh, I'm sorry, a spinning tree, so eliminate uh, those circuits, and at the same time, finding a minimum spinning, spinning tree, not just a spinning tree, but a minimum spinning tree. So, more generally, a graph whose edges are labeled with numbers that are known as weights is called a weighted graph. Guys, observe that earlier, early on, I mentioned that in this case, we're using mileage, right? We're using distance, but not necessarily. In this case, it's miles, but we could have um, any other type of cost or weight, okay? For example, in network communication, uh, yes, distance should be considered, but not necessarily the distance between point A and point B is going to be the most critical factor um, for that communication. We may look at, for example, uh, bandwidth, right? Or uh, uh, traffic load, which even if you have two endpoints that are very close to each other, but there is high traffic, passing through that link between those two endpoints, the chances that the, the communication through that link will not be as satisfactory as it could if you use another link, right? And even though that other link is farther away. So, <clears throat> so those edges, when we give values to them, we're creating what is called a weighted 
uh, weighted graph. A minimum weight spanning tree, or simply a minimum spanning tree, is a spanning tree for which the sum of the weights of all the edges of that spanning tree is as small as possible. Okay? So, we're going to look at two specific algorithms. Okay, the first one is going to be the cross codes um, algorithm. So, in cross codes algorithm, the edges of a connected weighted graph are examined one by one in order of increasing weight. At each stage the edge be being examined is added to that to what will become the minimum spanning tree provided that this addition does not create a circuit now obvious right <clears throat> we have to be careful because we cannot have circuits um, in our graph because if it does then it is not a spanning tree anymore so, after n minus 1 edges have been added, where n is the number of vertices of the graph, these edges, together with the vertices of the graph, form a minimum spanning tree for the graph. So, basically, this is the algorithm, right? Obviously, we're not going to go through each step of this algorithm, but what you have to observe here is, you have a graph, right, which we're going to call G. We're going to initialize T to have all the vertices of G. So we're creating a subgraph, right, T, that is basically a subgraph of G. And remember, for this to be a spanning tree, it's got to have all the vertices that belong to the graph. So, initialize C to have all the vertices of G and no edges for a very simple reason. The edges that we're going to uh, uh, bring down or inherit from G to T will depend on the weight or on the distance, if you, you will, right? So, the edges are exactly what we want to identify the minimum edges. So we import, let's say, or we inherit to T the vertices of G, but we do not inherit yet any edges of G. And then you go edge by edge, trying to identify the edges that will present minimum weight. And those are the edges that will be imported to into your new graph, subgraph, or your spanning tree, specifically T. So, as usual, I like to take a look at, at some examples, right? So, the first one, well, not the first, it's actually the same one that we just saw, right? So, uh, describe the action of Kruskal's algorithm on the graph shown in figure 1064, where n, the number of vertices, n is the number of vertices, equals 8, right? And you must also remember, where is it? Here. After n minus 1 edges have been added, so that's the number of edges that we want to find, which means that we're talking about 7 edges in this case. Okay, so let's take a look at the step here. First of all, you can basically randomly pick a vertex, okay? Basically, that's what we, you can do. So, uh, visually speaking, I would say that initiating with Minneapolis would make more sense. But again, this is just my, uh, this is just something that feels natural to me. If you want to start with uh, Cincinnati, for example, that is perfectly fine, okay? So, okay, we first take a look at the first iteration. If we're considering starting uh, from, oh, I'm sorry. So, if we're considering starting from Minneapolis, right? 
that is perfectly fine now there is one problem here if you oops if you do that you're going to see that you have two possible edges and what you're going to do is to pick according to the shortest um, edge right which in this case it would be 355 so it would be the edge between Chicago and Minneapolis okay now uh, which is 355 <clears throat> as you can see here it will at some point be added to our uh, spanning tree now why did the, the sequence that you see here is different from if I start with Minneapolis because again although you can do that it's easier to instead of initiating with a source point you initiate with the shortest or minimum weight which is exactly the distance between Milwaukee and Chicago okay it, it will just facilitate, it will help you achieve your goal. It will make it easier for you to achieve your goal. Again, we are going to need, uh, we're going to need to pick one of these two edges here, either between Milwaukee, oh, I'm sorry, Chicago and Minneapolis, or Nashville and Minneapolis. But you, you should, it, it will be easier for you if you start picking the vertices and edges based on the edge, the, the length or the cost or the weight of the edge. So if we're going to adopt that, we're going to start with the edge between Milwaukee and Chicago. So the first one will be Milwaukee and Chicago or Chicago, Milwaukee. If we take that same, um, uh, that same, let's say, uh, approach, if we adopt that same approach, we're not considering here the, the locations, the endpoints, but you're considering the edges, right? Well, which means that what is the, the next minimum edge that we have? Oh, it's the one between Cincinnati and Louisville correct this one okay if we follow that same approach I think that the next one is going to be Louisville and Nashville right here and then uh, what is it <laughs> between St. Louis and Louisville is that what it is I think that's what it is so here then here then here then here so oh there is another one 230 where is it oh yeah so i'm sorry Bef be before st louis and louisville we have detroit and cincinnati right now you just keep going in order to achieve your goal which is to find one two three four five six seven edges now let's say that you first create this table here without the action uh, column so you're only defining the first second and third columns iteration number edge considered and weight this is what you're gonna have now what are the edges that you want to adopt again we're talking about a minimum weighted spending tree or minimum spending tree. Well, if that's the case, we should pick the seven first uh, edges here instead of the six first edges and then pick in the last edge, which is actually the longest, uh, the longest edge, correct? Now, let me ask you a question why aren't we adopting iteration number seven which is the link between chicago and louisville neither between louisville and detroit nor louisville milwaukee 
So first of all, let's take a look at Chicago and Louisville. Chicago and Louisville. Why, according to our solution here, we are not adopting this edge over here, in your opinion? <clears throat> Any guesses? No? Look, to create a spinning tree, we must remember that we cannot have a circuit. And it, oops, I'm sorry. So Chicago, St. Louis, Chicago, St. Louis, Louisville. Chicago, St. Louis, and St. Louis, Louisville, here and here. They are already, they've been adopted already. If we adopt Chicago, Louisville, this one, what are we creating here? Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a circuit, so can't do that. Very good, Logan. That would be a circuit. We cannot do that, right? So that's why we're not going to adopt Chicago Louisville. And it's the same criteria for the edge between Louisville and Detroit. Um, so Louisville and the, where is it? Oh, here, Louisville and Detroit. Between, because we already have, we already adopted the edge between Louisville and Cincinnati and Cincinnati, Detroit. If we adopt this one as well, we're creating another loop, another circuit. Okay. And then same thing for Louisville, Milwaukee. But again, we need to make sure that all the vertices are in our subgraph in order to make it a spanning tree, which means that we still need Minneapolis. Therefore, although this one is the longest path that we have in our graph, we need it. Well, not the longest one, but the, the, uh, the longest one out of the ones that we are adopting, right? So there, we are creating we're using seven edges to connect all of our cities. That's how we're creating our minimum weighted spanning tree. Okay. Now, observe that initially I told you, okay, so one way of uh, solving this problem is randomly picking a spot, a city, and then you just go from there. But then we saw, well, maybe it's going to be easier if we just adopt the smaller, the smaller uh, edges, right? Or the shortest edges, the minimum edges. So let's consider the edges instead of the cities or instead of the vertices. So that is how the cross codes algorithm work. You are focusing on the minimum edges without considering the vertices. The vertices will be defined based on the way uh, on the edges, right? <clears throat> there it is. This is the the tree, the spinning tree that you're gonna get as a result. Okay. Again, so that's the cross codes algorithm. Now, the prims algorithm. It's also a minimum weighted spinning tree. Um, algorithm. But the difference is that we are now going to randomly pick a city or a vertex. Okay, so Prim's algorithm works differently from Cruskos. 
it builds a minimum spanning tree T by expanding outward in connected links from some vertex, okay? Which vertex is that going to be? Again, you can randomly pick it. One edge and one vertex are added at each stage. So the edge added is the one of least weight that connects the vertices already in T with those not in T and the vertex in the endpoint of this edge that is not already in T. So, <clears throat> again, let's just uh, pick that same example. So, describe the action of Prim's algorithm for the graph in this figure here, right? Same figure using the Minneapolis vertex as a starting point. So we're going to start from here, from Minneapolis, and then we're going to see that use that other approach that I mentioned early on. Okay. Minneapolis has uh, two degrees. One, well, where's my cursor here? One and two, right? So which one is the, is the shortest one? Well, obviously, it's this one, correct? Then we go to Chicago. So let's take a look at these steps here. Okay, from Minneapolis to Chicago, we have 355. Now, from Chicago, to Milwaukee, we have this uh, path here, this, uh, this edge here, with weight 74, right? And what about Chicago and St. Louis, or if the destination is St. Louis, right? So observe that the idea now is to focus on the vertex. So if we're starting from Minneapolis, I look at the next vertex and let's say that it's Chicago. Okay, what is the shortest one connecting those two? Okay, so here we go. Now, <clears throat> between, uh, uh, between Milwaukee, oh, considering that the next vertex is Milwaukee and we need to connect those two endpoints, right? So 74. Now, why can't I use, for example, Chicago? Let's forget about uh, the, the, the link here, the edge between Chicago and Milwaukee. Could I go from Chicago to Louisville and then from Louisville go to Milwaukee? Yes, I could. But again, the problem is the weight. The, the, the weight or the, the distance in this case, right? So to Milwaukee, I see that the shortest path is 74. Then if my vertex to be added is St. Louis, I also have a path which is between Chicago and St. Louis. So I, str I start to define that trajectory, picking the, the vertices okay, as my next step. So here, if we go back to cross calls, you're going to see that what we're considering at each step is the edge, right? In prims, what we're considering is the vertex. Why? Again, because you need all the vertices belonging to that uh, graph, to that subtree. And then you find the edge that is the shortest edge connecting uh, that specific vertex, okay? Again, let's take a look at, oh, here. Let's take a look at this specific graph here. Find all minimum spanning trees for the following graph. Use Korosko's algorithm and Prim's algorithm, starting at vertex A. Well, starting at vertex A for Prim's, right? We don't have an initial vertex for Korosko's. 
indicate the order in which edges are added to form each tree. Why do I want you to look at this graph here? I want to analyze with you this graph. Because, again, I just want to highlight that either cruscos or prims, they will, at the end, they will give you the same result. It's just the approach, okay? The algorithm is different, but you're going to get the same result. So, again, when cruscos algorithm is applied, edges are added in one of the following two orders. <clears throat> So you may have the possibility of DF, AC, AB, CD, D. Those are the edges, right? <clears throat> but when you use prims, starting at, uh, at vertex A, edges are added in one of the following two orders. Now, let's compare the one from Kruskos with one from Prims. DF, so we're going to have the edge DF. Is it here? Yes, it is. Edge AC. Here it is. AB. Here it is. CD. Here. D. Here. For the other possible uh, order, same thing, right? Oops, where's my cursor? DF, there it is. AC, there it is. BC, there it is. CD, there it is. DE, there it is. Now, obviously, for different uh, graphs or spanning trees, you may find more than one possibility or you may find one single possibility with different orders, right? But what matters here is that the, independently of the order of the edges that are defined in your minimum um, um, path, in, in your minimum uh, weighted spanning tree, either cross or prims, they will give you the same result. Once again, it's just the algorithm, just the approach that changes. Now, another important thing that you have to keep in mind is that both Kruskos and prims, their algorithms used for finding uh, the finding the shortest trajectory let's say, if we're talking about trajectory, considering a spanning tree, which means that you are considering the inclusion of all the vertices, right? Now, a Dijkstra shortest path algorithm, well, a shortest path algorithm in general, but specifically the Dijkstra algorithm, which is the one that we're going to talk about now, it is focused on finding the shortest path between a source and a destination. Observe that we're talking about shortest path. We're not talking about the shortest tree or the sh shortest subgraph. We're specifically talking about the shortest path which indicates that we're considering source and destination. What is the shortest path between this source and this destination, between point A and point B? Okay, so what you have to look at here is that you may have a graph, you may have a subgraph, you may have a tree, you may even have a spanning tree. Out of that uh, graph, again, that can be any of those types, I want to select a source in the destination and find the shortest path between those two. That's what the Dijkstra uh, 
algorithm can be used for one of its applications. So, although the trees produced by Kruskal's and Prim's algorithms have the least possible total weight compared to all other spanning trees for the given graph, they do not always reveal the shortest distance between any two points on the graph. Does that make sense? Okay. We are considering all the vertices and the, all the edges, but just to calculate the path between the source and the destination. Our path defined by Dijkstra will not most likely it will not include all the vertices and certainly it will not include well not certainly but most likely it will not include all the edges unless you have like a tree where you have a um, uh, the root under the root you have going to the left bottom left you have a and bottom right B, and you want to go from A to B. Well, there is only way to do that, right? Now, if that's not the case, you may have more than one alternative, more than one possibility for two random uh, points. So, in 1959, the computing pioneer Edsger Dijkstra developed an algorithm to find the shortest path between a starting vertex and an ending vertex in a weighted graph in which all the weights are positive. It is somewhat similar to Prim's algorithm in that it works outward from a starting vertex A, adding vertices and edges one by one to construct a tree T. However, it differs from Prim's algorithm in the way it chooses the next vertex to add, ensuring that for each added vertex V, the length of the shortest path from A to V has been identified. Basically, what is it telling you? You are adding up those distances. You are summing up those distances. So, for example, in this graph, I want to, to find out the shortest path between A vertices A and Z. Obviously, we have a bunch of possibilities, correct? We may go, <clears throat> we, may, we may go from A to C, C to E, E to Z, that's one. We may also have A to C, C to E, E to B, B to D, D to, to Z. A to B to E to Z, A to B to D to Z. And these are, again, just a few possibilities. There are so many others, right? Now, which one is the shortest one? And you must observe, and this is the beauty of the, um, the Dijkstra shortest path algorithm, because usually we tend to look at the graphs and shortest paths in graphs, analyzing distances. Now, the beauty of this algorithm is that you can actually define that metric. What metric should be used um, as a weight? Is it distance? Is it, uh, like I said, traffic? Is it jitter or delay generated by the distance. So basically you can define, is it the number of users using that link? So for example, in a road, you may have a shortest uh, link, a shortest road, but there's traffic there, right? Which is gonna jam, uh, which is gonna uh, hold you back and it will take longer. And you can actually combine many different metrics, but at the end, what matters is that you are capable of assigning values, okay, number values to each of those edges. And basically, you analyze, you analyze the possibilities that you have here, summing up those edges. OK? 
okay so now obviously we're gonna have a specific uh, algorithm to do that a specific sequence to do that right so for example okay we're going from a to Z what you want to do is to analyze the possibilities so from okay one way is from A to B okay you write that down so you start to create trees okay for example F I have uh, for tree F, I have B, C. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I have uh, from A, I have two possibilities to B or to C. What is the length? What is the weight for each of those? Well, A to B is three, A to C is four, right? So since LB is lower, lesser than LC, B is added to VT. DB, uh, so the distance of B is A. Therefore, AB is added to ET. So we're considering that this is the shortest path so far. Okay, now. <clears throat> obviously we're still considering this one although it so far it seems to be longer right or uh uh you you it it's gonna be it seems to be more expensive than this one but when we analyze that between from a to c is four and then from c to e is one what do we have here that's five. Okay. Then we go here and then we get to the destination, which will give it give us 14. Right? Now, if we continue to and then if we go back here to um, calculate continue from A to B, which presented initially, presented the shortest path. Let's say A, B, and then we go B, D. Okay, so that's three, nine, and then seven. That's 16. Three, eight, well, then this is gonna be the longest one, right? 20, or three, eight, 10, 17. So as you start to analyze all the possibilities, you're going to find out that this is going to be the shortest path. But what you do is to actually go backwards. So keeping track of the steps in a table is a convenient way to show the action of the algorithm, right? In step one, this step here, db equals a in step two dc equals a in step three de equals c in step four dd equals e in step five dz equals e working backwards gives the vertices in the shortest path so once you write down the trajectory or all the possible trajectories you are supposed to highlight the shortest one and then you go backwards from the destination to the source uh, using the uh, that value and subtracting that link because again the reason why you do this is because you have created so many different possibilities so many different trajectories that you highlight you you're going to have these subgraphs and out of those subgraphs i pick the subgraph that I, that i created with weight the total weight 14. for the total weight 14 i'll go from the destination 
and I start to subtract using the shortest uh, value, which will uh, take you back to here. Okay? So again, the difference here is that the Dijkstra shortest path algorithm is used to, def to help you find the shortest path between a source and a destination. So, when a connected simple graph with a positive weight for every edge is input to Dijkstra algorithm with starting vertex A and ending vertex Z, the output is the length of a shortest path from A to Z. I'm sorry. Okay? So, again, guys, the concept of the, the theory of graphs and the concept behind trees is very much used in IT as we've talked about so many times in these past weeks, right? These are just some possible algorithms that you can use it to find, to identify either the minimum uh, spanning tree or the shortest path. I, and I need you to remember that Dijkstra is just one of the possible algorithms for shortest path, okay? So, for example, um, there is also an algorithm called the greedy shortest path algorith algorithm. Let me, so, oh, I'm sorry, I'm taking much of your time, but just one more observation here, okay? If we look at this uh, graph here, a greedy algorithm would not actually give you the best output, the best result, because what it would do, it would be, okay, between A and B, that's three. Between A and C, that's four. So I am picking A to B. Now I am going to decide whatever comes after B. I have eliminated, eliminated C right, right on the bat, okay? I'm not analyzing that anymore because I have decided that from A, I'm going to go to B. I'm not going to go to C. Okay, now from B to D, that's 6. From B to E, that's 5. Those are the possibilities. So 5 is less than 6. I'm going to go here. I'm not considering going over there anymore. Now, the problem is, if I do that, now I only have two options. 12 or 2. Okay, so A, that's 3. 8, obviously, I'm going to pick this one, so that's 10, plus 7, that's going to be 17. There are so many other uh, better trajectories to uh, get me from A to Z, okay? Again, that is just another possibility. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about these possible algorithms that we have in, um, in tree, okay? specifically in graph theory there are so many others but these are the ones that i would like you, i would like to talk about okay guys and i'm sorry for taking much of your time let me stop the recording here